What's the price tag for a journey to the center of the earth? And pick your poison, morphine or mamba. And get on the floor, everybody do the dinosaur. All that and more coming up on today's Daily Orbit. Hi, I'm Emerald Robinson. Welcome to the Daily Orbit. What's your plan for the next year? Oh, to hang out in outer space? Cool. That's what the International Space Congress plans for a crew of astronauts by 2015. The Congress decided to double the current six-month limit in space to one year. The first year-long test will consist of one Russian and one American astronaut. A year-long mission will provide a better understanding of the long-term effects space flight has on human health and may pave the way for farther human-manned space missions. Seems like we're getting closer and closer to visiting our little Martian man. Well, if hanging out in space ain't your thing, how about a journey to the center of the Earth? A group of scientists are trying to raise $1 billion to go in the other direction, deep into the Earth's mantle. The team plans to drill in the Pacific Ocean, where they say the Earth's crust is the thinnest, at about 3.7 miles. They'll have to drill through hard, crystalline rock. Project leader Damon Teagle likened it to dangling a steel string the width of a human hair in the deep end of a swimming pool and inserting it into a thimble one-tenth a millimeter wide on the bottom and then drilling a few meters into its foundation. He called it the most challenging endeavor in the history of Earth science. Well, Mr. Teagle, good luck, and here's a contribution from me. Oh, man, the light bulb went out again. Hold on, let me print a new one. Wouldn't that be really cool? <laughs> With Disney's new 3D printed optics, that may one day be a possibility. Although in its beginning stages, Disney Research released a video showcasing its 3D prototype toys and light bulbs. Their 3D printers employ light pipes and a sort of plastic filament to create whatever is being printed. The company said the 3D printers will reduce the time it takes for them to test toys since production can be done in-house. Anyone surprised Disney's getting creative with toy making? Now here's a killer, a painkiller that is. Turns out one of the world's deadliest snakes, the Black Mamba, contains a painkiller that works as well as morphine, without the side effects. The venom has painkilling proteins that bypass the brain receptors targeted by morphine, which causes headaches, difficulty thinking, vomiting, muscle twitching, and a risk of addiction. Scientists say they were surprised that deadly venom from one of the most venomous snakes could contain analgesic properties. You know, I'm glad they found some benefit from the venom, but oh, stinks just make me cringe. And I love when we do stories about dinosaurs because I get to bring back my dinosaur dance. Scientists have unveiled new details about the fanged pegomastics. First uncovered in southern Africa in the 1960s, Pegomastix africanus, or thick jaw from Africa, had super sharp shearing teeth that it used for self-defense and sparring for mates. As a plant eater, the teeth were probably also used for nipping and digging rather than slicing flesh. The dinosaur boasted a covering of bristles like a porcupine and had a parrot-shaped beak. Scientists say the Pegomastix was about the size of a house cat and would have made a good pet. Yeah, maybe if he was just a little cuter. Sorry, Peggy. Well, that's all, folks. See you tomorrow on the Daily Orbit. Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody do the dinosaur. Boom, boom, shaka laka